Thank you. 
is going to be a special night. Amen. God's in control. Amen. We're just going to let God go and let Him have His way tonight. Amen. Like I said this morning, I said we're going to have singing tonight. Just singing and just have some praise and sing praises unto God tonight. And if God lays it on somebody's heart, the Lord said to test to preach, to testify, she said, let it go. Amen. Just let them, let them just obey God tonight. Amen. And that's the way it needs to be. Amen. Amen. Uh, but when we pray tonight, amen, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Wayne to come up and open us up in prayer tonight. But I actually remember the Webb family. Uh, Brother Danny Webb was the one was in that wreck this morning. Amen. He's gone to heaven now. The acts of the bodies to be present with the Lord. Right. Amen. But we got to remember Sister uh, Sharon tonight. Amen. Sister Sterling said she doesn't got to go home. But amen. Home's not the same now. Like Sister Darling was talking this morning. Home's not the same. Amen. So just remember that family tonight. Also remember the family that lost a loved one, a teenage boy, 17 years old, on I 65. Miss Grove yesterday uh, lost his life, and that family is grieving tonight. Uh, the girl was from uh, Franklin, Kentucky. She's in Sky, where she's in critical condition. God knows who she is. Did she pass away too? Oh, Amen. So remember those families tonight. Amen. Also, the other man that was involved in the wreck of the well, he was in the taking his time on and asking to. Precious Father God, we come before you tonight. Lord, Lord, ask you to answer this request. Lord, have the wreck of the well, have the other gentlemen, Lord, have the wreck of Lord. We have families, Lord God, that have been lost Friday night.
It's a very old song. It's meeting in the air. And we really don't know what key, but we're going to go with the lead. You have heard of the Moses in the Lord.
swale where you washed in the blood. <coughs> Have you been to Jesus in the cleansing of Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace and His Son? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb?
Hallelujah. This is the Lord's house tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We got a lot to pray about tonight. Amen. I should remember East Village Street Church of God tonight. Amen. That was a, a big loss in their church. But uh, Brother Webb led the same. Amen. And uh, remember him that that brother Danny, amen, give the Danny the strength, amen, to right, it's, a, uh, it's a blow, amen, to their church, amen, so remember that, amen. Also remember uh, Brother Jackie Stamps tonight, amen, I, and also me and I was just talking to Brother Timmy yesterday, amen, uh, Sister Tammy, amen, really needs our prayers. Church, she's really having some problems. Amen. Praise the Lord. Has to make sure he follows up. Amen. But uh, remember her. She really does need prayer. Amen. It ain't only just her breathing. There's other things that's bothering us. Bothering her. Amen. And she needs to touch from God. Uh, Brother Kimmy also. Amen. He needs a touch. Amen. He was telling me about Austin. A spell he had, and I'll just tell you, it sounded like he was having a heart attack. He said his chest got real tight, he got real sick, he started throwing up, and he don't even know how he got to the truck to get his phone because he said, Therefore, why can't he get to his truck to get his phone? He said sweat broke out all over him and started hurting real bad. And, uh, I told him, I said, Don't be like Don Levi, go get something to be done about it, go to the check. Amen. So, but remember him also in your prayers. Amen. Uh, God sent some people by there that to, to check on him. And he, they, uh, they got him. He said, "I'm all right." I went to the doctor already. I then went to Doctor Jesus. Amen. But but remember him because he's still having that problem. He said he's still having that problem. Amen. So uh, remember him that God will touch him tonight also. Amen. Somebody else got a prayer request tonight. Y'all remember Captain? Yes. I think she's still in the hospital. I think she's still in the hospital. Amen. So, yeah, we're going to her. Amen. I know it was hard on them yesterday, too. Amen. Somebody else. Somebody else tonight. Somebody else. Yes, and he pointed to little Mr. Oh, Mr. Bell. 
Amen. You remember that, don't you, sister daughter? Amen. Amen. He was just a little thing, but now, amen, he's he's working for the Lord. Amen. amen. He's playing music. I'm glad he filled in this morning. Amen. Uh, sister Bessie, like that song you saw. Uh, but remember Sister Bessie, amen, up in Michigan, her her family. Sister Lily Harvey asked us to remember her family this tonight in prayer, amen, so remember uh, Sister Lily Harvey's family, amen, Sister Bessie, amen, she, she, she told him on there today, she said, he preaches it, and he don't sugarcoat it, amen, he does it like it is, amen, that's why she says she loves this little church, amen, and we love them, amen, we love everybody that watches us by live stream, we uh, pray for our California church, Brother Darrell, and uh, Sister Francis, and little Artie, Amen. Remember them. Remember Sister uh, Marjorie Burkett and her family. Sister Judy McCarty and her family. Uh, Sister Carly Pope and her family. Amen. Sister <laughs> Naomi uh, Hammer and her family. Amen. They were having church today. I was watching them before I come to church. Amen. So uh, remember them. Also remember Sister Lynn. Amen. That God would touch her family. Amen. Remember all those over in India that over in Kenya, amen, that watches us, amen, that sits around the big TV to watch us, our services. And I pray tonight that they get blessed. I pray tonight that when y'all begin to start singing that the anointing of God would just go through the airways and get a hold of them and, and just bless and somebody gets saved and he'll write and tell us, hey, somebody got saved tonight. Boy, wouldn't that just be great, amen. amen. Well, pretty sure ain't that, that's a mission, amen. That's still a mission field, amen. We're reaching people over foreign countries, amen. And uh, just remember them, amen, over there, amen. Remember uh, Brother Bob Sandman and his church up in Ohio at Five Mile Holiness Church. I'm going to try to get a hold of Brother Bob here, amen, the first of the year, somewhere around there. I said he'll come and preach for us, amen. I'll tell you what, he can preach, can you, Brother Wayne? Brother Bob's a good man of God, amen, and uh, I believe he lives what he preaches, amen, so, uh, but pray for his sister-in-law, she needs prayer, amen, uh, we'll see where it's trying to attack her, amen, that's his brother's wife, amen, he lost his brother uh, two years ago, amen, to cancer, amen, and then his sister-in-law, so uh, just really pray for his sister-in-law that God would touch her, heal her body, Amen. Uh, also remember uh, the service tonight. Yeah, remember Brother Kevin and Sister Wendy and Plano tonight. They start revival tonight. Amen. So remember the revival. Amen. Uh, somebody else uh, is having a revival too. I think you remember who it is. Oh. Brother Russell Mills is supposed to be starting the Bible too. Amen. So remember the name. I don't know what night it started. But uh, Johnny Abney's in the Bible. Uh, somebody else too. Oh, Brother Timmy Caps. Remember the name in prayer tonight. Him and Sister Marty. Amen. Remember their church in prayer also. Amen. Brother Timmy watches us. Amen. We can. Amen. So uh, remember them in prayer. Amen. Somebody else before we pray. Yeah, I remember Sister Charlotte, Sister Teresa, I thought they won't be get to be here tonight, but Brother Gary wasn't feeling good this morning. He was really bad sick this morning, amen, so remember them, amen. Uh, remember Sister Nora, I believe we're going to get this, all this is all taken care of this morning. I do, I believe God took care of it this morning. Amen. Amen. What was it, Sister Miss, those three words? It is done. It is done. Amen. Amen. When God says it's done, it's done. Amen. 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 And I believe that. Amen. Somebody else before we pray. Remember the congregation was made up love too. Yes. They're yes. They're, yeah, they're, they're having some problems. Amen. God can intervene there and straighten things out. Amen. Uh, remember uh, Nora's uh, sister Wilma? She's been having real bad headaches. And uh, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, but 
remember her in your prayers. Amen. And God will touch them. Uh, pray for all those it seems tonight that God just poured his morning out upon them. Amen. Uh, pray for uh, our, like Cassie said, our, our singer, Brother Morris. I was hoping he get to make it tonight to sing for us. But, but remember Brother Morris. Amen. In your prayers. I've been over there for what, four days, and it just seems like he just, it ain't the same voice. Amen. So, just remember him in prayer. Amen. Special, we'll have special prayer for him tonight. Thank his grandson, standing in for him tonight. Amen. We'll have special prayer for Brother Morris. Amen. He got the touch. Un unspoken request by the raise of your hands. Pray to see or pray to God. Thank you. 
forget what God lays on your heart and deal with.
Amen. That's that was Nord's daddy's favorite song. Amen. Oh, all right. Let's see. <laughs>
after that, I won't come down and put the Bible and make them cure. <coughs> Brother also sang that one song they used to sing all the time. Ago. Yes, 
step I made is just looking for my chance. Sometimes the battle seems so low. But Jesus, you're the light of God.
Hallelujah. Can't tell me. You know what? I, I like it in, in that song where it says, a drunkard and the addict. Everybody seems to forget about him. But he died for them just the same. Amen. He died for them just the same as he did the harlot. Amen. He died the same as he did just for the homosexuality people. Amen. The, the transgenders. He died for them. As he did the preachers. Amen. The singers. Let me tell you something. I'd rather hear this kind of singing than go to a big concert. I'll just tell you I would. Amen. I'd rather hear Sister Darlene sing like she did this morning. Amen. Uh, open up the floodgates of heaven and let it. I'd rather hear that. Amen. They go out here and do these big concerts and all you hear is this show. Amen. But this is from the heart. Amen.
and I start drawing this PA. It's up and down and all around. It's loud. I'm hard of hearing, and it's loud to me. But I just want to thank the Lord tonight for being here. Thank you for everything He means to me. You know, I have got something to thank God for. Why? Because He woke me this up this morning. He started me on my way. He didn't have to do it, but He did. Hallelujah. He didn't have to feed me today, but He did. He didn't have to pay my bills this month, but He did. Hallelujah. The goodness of God. Hallelujah. People take God for ready. They put Him on the back burner, and they don't use Him until something happens. Yeah. Tragedy happens. Correct. Balance. Whatever. They don't even think about God a lot of times until tragedy happens. Right. <laughs> until tragedy happens, people just don't. They just don't. They are too carnally minded to be any heavenly good. You know, I'm just going to tell you, people take God for granted. They take church for granted. They take church for granted that it's going to be open next week. And you know it's going to be open next week. We pray and we hope it is, but we don't know God's future. Hallelujah. I'm just going to tell you, I have got so much to thank him for. You know, I sat here, and I sat here, and my mind rolled back. And my friend Rita, she was worried about her husband, Joe, passing away. We done a benefit for him probably 10 or 15 years ago, and we helped make money for, to help pay for his bills and stuff. And my friend Rita, that's all she done. She was so worried about Joe. But God told Rita home before Joe. Joe's still living, hallelujah. We don't know when we're going to go. So praise the Lord and go on and live for Him the best you know how. Amen. And if He comes, be ready to go. That's right. If He comes for you, be ready. You know, the Bible says to be two in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Are we going to be the one left or are we going to be the one taken? I thank God for His grace. I thank God for taking care of me. Yeah. He didn't have to do it, but He did. Amen. Hallelujah. And if I live six more months, hallelujah, since the mission, I'll be 65 Amen. years old. And I praise God yeah. every day for letting me live. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, when they plagued me with that ugly C word, I went to my bathroom and I turned my face to the wall. And I said, God, I ain't done a whole lot. But Lord, give me 15 more years. Fifteen more years, Lord, to work for you, to serve you. Hallelujah. And I thank the Lord that you've done been seven. And I'm praising the Lord. Because whenever he comes, I'm going to go be with him. And I thank him. I even told that doctor. You know, when they took me up out of that doctor, and he said, he was talking about me and knowing them. I said, yeah, I know. This is bad time. But I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed for a divine miracle from the Lord, but he didn't work that way. He worked through surgery, but God gets the glory. Because man can't do nothing unless God teaches it and lets him do it. God gets all the glory, and he ain't going to share his glory with nobody. He ain't going to share his glory with nobody. And you ever tell you, you ever tell you why the devil gets so much done? I'm going to tell you why the devil gets so much done. It's because he don't have no conflict with another devil. All devils agree. But you know what? All these Christian people and all these churches, they can't even get along to come together for a service. What? I guess one's jealous than the other. I don't know. I don't know. But you can't hardly get. I'm talking all churches. Well, you don't believe exactly like I am. And you don't do exactly like right. I do, so I can't come to your church. Right. And I can't sit in your service, right. and I can't come and pray for you because you don't believe just like I believe. Right. Well, let me tell you something. You better believe the Bible way. Because right. man will tell you, man will take you to the wrong place. He'll take you the wrong thing. So you better get in that word and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. Because that's who you're going to answer to. You ain't going to answer to the church family. You ain't going to answer to your brothers or your sisters or your half and James. You're going to answer to God. And the one that knows more is required more. You know, you one that knows more is required more. 
And um, he's coming after those that's made their stuff right, right without right. spot, without blemish, and without a wrinkle. Man. So we better be working our way up to heaven one day at a time right. through the Word, through praying, through fasting, through living right, right. Yep. through talking to God and quit looking and poking fun and judging everything and everything that everybody does that you don't agree with. Just because I do something and you don't agree with it, that don't mean I'm wrong. That don't mean you're right. You know, we have all sin high, and that is God, and He's the boss. And when we pray and we ask Him, if we're living according to what He says and it's His will, He's going to answer. You say, oh, but well, the Word says, but it also says it's if it's His will. Because He has a time frame of everything. He has a time frame of your loved ones getting saved. He has a time frame of you getting healed. He has a time frame for delivering you. He has a time frame for blessing you. Hallelujah! And Jesus is the Son of God and it takes us living right and the only way we can get to God is through Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. That's the only way we're going to get to the Master. Right. God is the head. And if we don't live right, and if we don't live for Jesus, and if we don't work our, on our salvation every day, the devil's going to steal your soul. Right. Right. He's going to steal your soul. And he'll make you so mad at people and get aggravated at stuff that happens. But you know what? Get mad, don't sob nothing. Amen. Get your feelings hurt, don't sob nothing. You gotta pray through it, pray over it, and keep on praying and keep living right. Because one day when we stand for the Lord, it don't matter if somebody's hurt your feelings. What matters is are you living, are you washed in the blood and are you living right? You know there's a lot of people and I love them all. There's Baptist, Methodist, Church God, Pentecostal, Episcopalian, all of them. And they'll tell you you've got to be born again. And the Word of God says that. But they fail to tell people you've got to live right. After you get saved, after you get born again, you have to live right. You have to live right. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. I remember Brother Danny Patrick saying that all the time. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. And a lot of people say, well, I can get up and I can't say nothing or I can't think of nothing. As long as you've done your best, that's all you're required. That's all you're required. It don't matter if you sound good or if you sound bad or whatever you sound like. As long as you've done your best, that's, right. that's all you're required. Because you know, say, I wrote with the Lord for a long time. Because I said, Lord, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. But when the Lord told me and got it sunk in this thick head up here, it's all I need and all I want is your best. When I got that in my mind, in my head, in my heart, that all I'm, he's wanting from me is my best, I started obeying him. I started living the way he wants me to live. I started doing the things he wanted me to do. And it says work out your own salvation. It don't say for me to work yours out and you to work mine out. It says work out your own. Amen. Work out your own. Amen. And you know, a lot of people will say, well, they don't dress like I do. They don't look like I do. They don't smell like I do. Well, did you ever think that there may be a baby in Christ? They may have just gave their heart to Jesus. And they may not have learned what the Scripture says. And that may be why they don't look and act and dress like you do. Because God may not reveal it to them. I'm going to tell you something. You know, this is just a praise and worship of service tonight anyway. But I'm going to tell you, when I was younger, I think I was probably in my 30s. I was backslid. It's something I'm not proud of. And you know, Miller was going to buy me a cluster ring. Knowing all the time, God done told me a long time ago, jewelry's not for you. You don't wear the jewelry. It's not for you. It don't bother me that other people wear it, but God told me not to do it. And I was in the pawn shop on the Glasgow Square. I think it's done closed down now. And he was going to buy me that ring. And you know, me backslid in the Glasgow pawn shop on the square. 
He said, how can you remember that? Because it was a God thing. I was backslidden and he spoke to me. He said, you know, when you go back to church, you will not be able to wear that ring. So you know what I said? I don't want it. I don't want it. Because God knew somewhere down the road he was going to speak to my heart. And he was going to commit my heart. And he was going to have mercy on me. And he was going to bring me back to Calvary. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you another thing that was a God thing. I love everybody that's here. And you know, 
I just want to be ready to go when the Lord calls me. And I want everybody to go. I understand everybody's not going to go. But it don't mean I don't want them to go because I do want them to go. I wouldn't want my worst enemy to go to hell. Because when they get there, they can't get back. They're going somewhere that they've never been and they can't get back. And that's why we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling and use our Bible as our roadmap and answer to God for us. For us. Because you know why? Because we're the ones going to stand in judgment. It ain't going to be us and the church and us or friends and us or husband or wife. It's going to be us. And we're going to be right there with the Lord. And He's going to look at us and we're going to have to measure. Is our good going to outweigh the bad? And are we washed in the blood? Are we living for Jesus the best we know how? Because if we're not, guess what? You're twirling your thumbs for nothing. You're twirling your thumbs for nothing if you're halfway Christian. If you're a hypocrite in the rain, if you're a halfway Christian, you ain't going. I don't care who you are. You ain't going. And the Bible says to know to do good and to do not is a sin unto you. And that's why we have to keep on pressing and keep on praying and keep on doing the will of God. Because Jesus is coming. And from the looks of it, it's going to be very soon. The Bible is fulfilling every day. And the Bible talks about when Israel is surrounding all the armies out and everything. You know what Israel is? And they're trying to kill everybody. And I told them the other night, I looked on the internet, and there was a big old slew of stuff that's got recalls on it. And I said, what did they try to do? Kill everybody with food? Everything you've seen that's been sold in the market, just about everything, they've got recalls on it. And I told him, I said, what's somebody trying to do? Kill everybody. He said, yeah, they are. And we just don't know. We don't know what shape this world's going to get in before Jesus comes and gets us. The main thing is be ready. I love the Lord. I love everybody here. Amen. Lord, kiss the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Y'all come on, brother. Come on, brother. Brother, Mr. Help me, Jesus.
won't be Jezebel won't be Well, that wicked woman Jezebel won't be He was a raging man It said one or two Elijah and said tomorrow you'll be dead The old prophet he was young first So he found a place to pray He went up on the mountain And he hid inside a cave So there inside the cave
that they just don't know they're going to be able to make it through on their own? Who would just be honest? Raise your hand for just a moment. Amen. Who would be honest with yourself and say that I don't think I can make it through this on my own? I think I'm going to sit here and die and suffer until I can have the help from the Lord. Lord. I want to ask everybody that would. I know it's late. You want to sit and rest. But come on up here. Everybody. Whether you're saved or not, get up here. How many knows this is a war that we're in? This is a battlefield that we have to go out in, day in and day out. There is no end to war. Michael, you did. There, was there ever a ceasefire where you just paused and went over and hugged each other? No, you was in war all the time, wasn't you? There was always something you had to be doing, right? right? Welcome to the Christian walk now, everybody. There's always something you got to be doing. Right. This scripture kept coming to me a while ago. Uh -huh. And I believe I know why, and I can't get it off my head. So everybody that's got a need that they can't make it through, I want you to get right here in the middle with everybody. If you need to sit down, you can sit down on the altar. But I want those to come up here, and you be right here. Right. Every single one of you, come on up here. And the rest of you, you're supposed to be the saints to pick up those that are sick, those that are hurting. So I'm going to play something just a moment. See, I got to thinking about this in the spiritual realm, and it's just a little bit different than the natural sometimes. I want you all to lock arms with each other. You know what that means? Put one arm inside of the other. And I want you all to get your minds on God and to close your eyes. And the scripture that kept coming to me is 2 Samuel chapter number 5, starting at verse 23. And it reads, And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but you should fetch a compass behind them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the top of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so as the Lord had commanded him, and they smote the Philistines from Geba all the way over until thou come to Gazer. That was a long distance that they had to fight through. And there wasn't very many at all. But you know what? If you could close your eyes and just begin to think about every battle that you all are going through, it is a mighty long distance. And you ain't going to make it on your own. You are going to trip and you are going to fall and you are going to be crying tears that nobody sees but you and God. Your spouse don't even know the battles that you're going through. But I want you to focus on this one thing. God made a way in the middle of the mulberry bushes. He said, He said, when the wind began to blow in the mulberry bushes, He said, then you go out and you fight, because you'll know that I'll go before you. So many times you have fought and said, I ain't got time for it. 
I ain't got time to let God have this just yet. I'm gonna carry this burden just a little bit longer. Oh, oh. There is a head in this church. Set off those waves that are so easily dragging you in and out of church. That are torturing your mind and your heart and your body. It's making you not want to eat, not making you want to sleep. Remember the Lord is your rest. The joy of the Lord is your strength.
I told you just here a while back, if you remember, I told you that there was a sound that was going to come to He's Alive Community Church. Right. There's going to be a sound of wind that's going to blow through this church. Amen. And it's going to go through this church and it ain't going to just stop. Amen. At this church, but it's going to keep on going. Amen. Amen. And it's going to go out and reach souls. Amen. There's lost people out here in this world, right out here, that's dying Amen. and going to a devil's hell. <gasps> and that's the truth. Amen. And people just worry about what's inside their church. Don't worry about nothing else. Right. Or they just worry about their four and no more. Amen. But God said there's people out there in the highways and in the hedges. Amen. That needs to be compelled. Amen. Compelled means to go get them and break them. Right. To the house of the Lord. Amen. But when he started reading that about the sound of the mulberry bush, I thought about when they hung their hearts upon the willow tree because they were done. And they said, We're finished. A lot of preachers just laid their harp upon the willow tree and said, I can't preach no more. In other words, they laid their sword down. Sister Darlene, they have laid their sword down. I come to tell you tonight, just like I told Sister Misty this morning. Amen. You're the property of the Most High God. You're the servant right. of the Most High God. And you've got the power and you've got the authority right, man. to put that devil in his place. Yeah. See, God let me know that the other day when I was reading the Bible and I was studying the Word of God, Brother Michael, that he gave us the power. All right. All right. He said, I gave the power to my Son to the heavens and the earth. I give him the power over all. He said, in the beginning, I gave Adam the power over all the animals, over all the sea, over all the fishes. I gave it to him. He said, I also give you the power. I give you the authority to put the devil in his place. Jesus said, I didn't come to do my will, but I came to do my Father's will. He said, I didn't come. In other words, he said, I didn't come to be glorified, but I came to glorify my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. And I, I'm so glad that God, this morning, when He said, just have some singing. Listen, we've reached somebody's heart tonight through the Word of God, through singing. Through what Sister Nora said and what Brother Austin has said. And the songs that you sung has reached somebody's heart tonight, somebody's life tonight. That feels like that they want to hang their harp upon the willow trees and say, I'm done. I'm finished. But we come to tell you tonight that there's no giving up. Don't give up. It's too late. It's too late to be giving up right now. Right, man. It's too close. We're almost at the finish line. Amen. Don't give up. But just hold on to that hand. Right. Church, we got to tell people, don't give up. If you come too far to give up. You come too far to lay down and say, Well, I'm done. I'm finished. I don't want to do nothing else. But God said, When it's done, it's done. And when it's over, but often it's over. See, Jesus said, Bob. It is finished. In other words, he said, it's done. I've done what you had me to do. And when he said it was finished, the Bible said he gave up the ghost. And he died. Right. Amen. So remember that, Sister Darlene, that you, amen, are the servant of the Most High God. Amen. Hallelujah. You can put that devil in his place. Just glory the same thing. Amen. 
we're the servant of the Most High God. Right. Amen. Don't let Him push you around. Hallelujah. Anybody want to give God some praise? We've sung now. Who wants to give Him some praise? Somebody else. said that we're supposed to hold up the standard. I was thinking about the song that Brother Michael and Sister Bonnie was singing while I said that hold up your hands. Amen. When you see your brother and sister that their hands are starting to droop, amen, help them hold them up. Amen. Encourage them. Amen. David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. Amen. He encouraged himself. Sometimes we got to encourage ourselves. Amen. Somebody else. Praises unto God. 
Amen. And I believe that somebody tonight, amen, got blessed and touched. When Saul was tormented and he couldn't get no rest, no sleep, he would call David to come and play the heart and heart. sing song. And run the street for it. That's right. Amen. But we love you. We appreciate you for tuning us in. Before we got home today, we had almost over 300 views on this morning's service. Somebody wants to hear the Word of God. Somebody wants to be touched. We appreciate you. We love you. Listen, if you're around this area and you're looking for a home church and you ain't got one, come and try us out. That's all I can say. Come and try us out. If you don't like us, you don't have to stay. I will tell you this. We believe in the preaching the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. The preachers in the church, they don't believe in sugarcoating it. They don't believe in watering it down. Amen. They preach it just like it is. Being the assistant pastor, we preach it just like God gives it to us. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you, but if you don't have a home church and you're looking for one, come out to 1499 Birchville Road, Glasgow, Kentucky. Amen. Right out here on uh, Highway 90 going towards Summer Shade, you can't miss it. If you're coming back from Summer Shade, you won't miss it. Amen. It's here on the left just right before you get to the shell station. Amen. But we would love to have you. Amen. Our service time's on Thursday nights. Amen. It's 7, Sunday morning at 11, and Sunday night at 6. Amen. Listen, if you ain't got, if, you're, if your church ain't having church on Thursday night, and you just want to come and to worship and fellowship with us, come on. Come on. Amen. It don't matter what denomination, if you're Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of God, Assembly of God, Catholic, it don't matter. Amen. Mormon, whatever. Amen. You want to come and fellowship with us, come and fellowship with us. It don't matter what color or race you are. Amen. You're welcome at He's a Life Community Church. Amen. Until Thursday night. May God bless you is our prayers. Amen.